Hello, history lovers, and welcome to the Henricus Craft Chat. I'm your host, Nicole. Henricus is a living history museum that focuses on the early colonization of Virginia by the English and on the Powhatan Indian tribe that was in the area. A few weeks ago, we celebrated May Day together. Today, I'd like to talk about another holiday that was celebrated in the 17th century, opposite on the year from May Day, and that is All Hallows. Once known as Samhain and All Hallows Eve, and now known as Halloween, many of the traditions and iconography that we know today come from centuries ago. So today, since we're at about the halfway to Halloween point, I would like to talk about some of those old traditions, and then I can show you a spooky craft that you can do at home. So let's begin with one of the most iconic symbols of Halloween, the jack-o'-lantern. Long before the English came to the New World, people were carving jack-o'-lanterns for All Hallows. Only problem is, pumpkins didn't grow in England. They were only known to the English after they sailed to North America and encountered the Powhatans. So what were jack-o'-lanterns made of before pumpkins? How about a turnip? That's right. Although quite a bit smaller and tougher to carve, these hardy root vegetables were the original jack-o'-lanterns. Because turnips can be a bit difficult, a simple face was all that was required, and instead of hollowing out from the top, a hole was carved in the bottom of the turnip so that it could be sat directly over a small candle. They last a lot longer than pumpkins and provide a pretty cool effect, but if you've ever tried to carve a turnip before, you'll understand why they switched to pumpkins. There's actually a short folk tale about the origin of jack-o'-lantern, and I'll leave it for you to read in the description box. What would modern Halloween be without trick-or-treating? Today, the practice of trickery has mostly gone away or been relegated to Devil's Night, the night before Halloween. Today, any child arriving on a doorstep or in a shopping mall will most likely be given a piece of candy as a treat, but the practice of going door to door on holidays goes back centuries and shows up in different cultures. Just like mumming at Christmas time in Britain or the spooky Krampusnacht from Austria, All Hallows had its own door to door tradition known as souling. This is a Christian tradition revolving around remembrance for the dead. Soul cakes, simple cookies usually involving currants and displaying a cross on top, would be baked and distributed to children and the poor who went door to door souling. In exchange for the cakes, a prayer would be sung for the households dearly departed. Though we consider this the origin of trick-or-treating, some places still bake soul cakes and practice souling today. Another name for Halloween that you might not be aware of was Nutcrack Night, as harvested nuts would be roasted over huge fires. Bonfires during this time of year were lit on hilltops, just as they would be for May Day to drive off witches, fairies, and evil spirits. But another reason it might be called Nutcrack Night was the use of nutcracking in divination or predicting the future. This was used more as a fun party trick or superstition rather than thought of as any serious magic, and it could be mostly applied to young women looking to figure out who their future husband might be. Because really, what else could a woman ever want in life? Specifics on how it worked differed across Britain, but typically some type of shelled nut would be placed on the fire with each one being given the name of a would-be lover. Then you could sit back and see if the nuts burned or if they cracked, having decided beforehand which one was the good omen. For instance, in Wales, if the nuts representing a couple were to pop and fly simultaneously, the couple would marry, but if they exploded at different times, it meant they would part. Another Halloween divination game, this one a little bit spookier, was to stand in a dimly lit room in front of a mirror and eat an apple. If your lover reciprocated your love, then he would appear behind you and look over your right shoulder and ask for a piece of the apple. Last but not least, who can imagine Halloween without witches? Of course, in the 17th century, Witches weren't just storybook monsters that rode on broomsticks. They were real people, 
usually women and often outcasts of their communities who were executed under superstitious laws. The early modern witchcraft hysteria lasted from around 1450 until about 1750 and resulted in the deaths of somewhere between 35,000 and 100,000 people. During this time, there were people known as witchfinder generals who went from town to town hunting witches and bringing them before the courts. The premier book for witch hunting was known as the Malleus Maleficarum, or the Hammer of Witches. Written by Heinrich Kramer, a German clergyman in the year 1486, it describes in great detail who witches are, what their powers can do, and how to detect and punish them. Many of the ideas we have about witches today come from the things outlined in this book, and if you ever get the chance, I highly suggest you take a look at it. The entertainment value alone is well worth the read. Laws prohibiting the use of magic existed throughout the 17th century, but there were some who practiced magic that were able to escape these laws, and they were known as cunning folk. A cunning man or woman was someone who produced magical charms and potions, for a fee, to counteract witchcraft. Think of it as light magic. While technically still illegal, cunning folk were relied upon by the community, and so were often overlooked by the courts. Of course, they also treaded on dangerous ground, as a misstep could result in them being accused of witchcraft themselves. So how does one counteract the evil magic of a witch's curse? Let's look at some things you can do to protect yourself at home. Or at least make a cool Halloween decoration. All right, so there's two crafts that we're gonna focus on today. And both of them were things that were thought to protect you and your household from witchcraft. So the first one, they're both very simple crafts. The first one is called a rowan cross. Now, all you'll need for this is a couple of sticks and some red berries. Traditionally, these were both from the rowan tree, but because I don't have any rowan trees that I know of that grow near me, I'm using some Nadina from my backyard. So you'll need those. You'll also need a pair of craft scissors and some red ribbon or yarn or thread. And then I've also got a needle and thread, also red thread, um, that I'm gonna be using to make a little loop of the berries. So the first thing you do is you take your rowan twigs and form a cross. And then you will take your red ribbon or yarn and tie them around the middle to hold the sticks together. So once you get a tie, you can kind of go in and out. and alternate so that they hold that cross shape. Just like that. And then you can tie it off and this is where you would be finished if you want it. But some of them that we see also have a little ring of rowan berries over the top. And so I'm gonna make one with that as well. And to do that, I'll just take some of my berries off of the bunch. These berries are pretty dry, and so I know they're gonna last a long time as well. So you might wanna think about that when finding the proper berry to use. Then I'm gonna take my needle and thread tie a knot in the end, and I'm gonna go through each of the berries. Mm -hmm. 
once you get a few of them on there, you will tie it into a loop. And this loop gets tied around the top, whichever one you think is the top of your rowing cross. Now these were meant to hang over fireplaces or the tops of doors and they were meant to keep bad luck from entering the home and keep the evil eye off of you. So I wouldn't hang it by the berries because they're not very sturdy, but you can make a loop out of your ribbon here or out of your thread up here and hang it up on a little nail above your mantle or above your front door. So there's our rowing cross. So I'm gonna set that aside for now, and we're gonna work on our second craft, which is a witch's bottle. Now, witch's bottles were made and put underneath the front doorsteps of homes, um, put underneath homes, in walls. Uh, they were found all the way up until Civil War era. Um, there have been witch bottles being discovered. So they've been used for quite a long time, and what they're meant to do is to trap a witch's magic or the spirit of a witch and keep them from entering the household. So what you'll need for this is a bottle. Now, if you wanna use this as a Halloween decoration, you can use a fancy bottle like the one I have here, but traditionally they were buried. So don't use something that you're gonna miss or you don't wanna bury. Um, you can use something that is just something like this, which is uh, used to have a drink in it and still has a screw top on it. You don't have to be fancy and have a nice bottle with a cork. So you'll need your bottle. You will also need some wine or some manner of alcohol. Traditionally, wine was used and some nails. So I've just got some regular nails here. You can also use some straight pins you can use both. I'm gonna go ahead and use both. And then you're gonna need something from the people that you are trying to protect. So if it's yourself or your family members or your pets, you're gonna need something of theirs for this magic to work. So traditionally, these were a little bit gross. Uh, they would put in here some hair, fingernail clippings, even urine. Now, if you wanna pee in it, that's up to you. But I just went ahead and took some hair from my hairbrush. You can save your fingernail clippings. You can use fur from your pets or feathers from your pets and put them in here too. And you're gonna go ahead and put that right in the bottle. So the idea of this, the reason to put your personal effects in here um, is because when a curse would be cast on someone, the magic would be attracted to them. So you want to distract the witch's magic by putting pieces of yourself, such as your fingernails or your hair, or in certain cases, your urine, into the bottle. Now, today, of course, I understand if you don't want to do that, uh, you can use pieces of clothing, some scraps of fabric uh, from an old t-shirt, something small that is a personal effect. You can put a little bit of that in there as well. Now, we've got the bait and the lure in here. Now is time for the booby traps. So that's what the pins are for. So we'll put some pins in here. This is a really nasty trick for any witch that's trying to curse you. And the nails. And then I'm gonna add the wine. So I've got my wine in there. And you can add water, you can add water with food coloring if you're doing this with kids or if you're using this as a Halloween decoration. You might wanna fill it up with some colored water just for fun. You can tell people that it's urine, you can tell people that it's wine, 
But the idea of this whole thing is that whatever curse was cast would be attracted to the items that you put inside from yourself instead of to you. So the witch would be trapped inside the bottle where she would get drunk on the wine, impaled upon the pins, and stabbed by the nails. And there you have a trapped witch, or at least a trapped witch's spell that protects you and your household. Now, again, you can make this pretty. You can put it out for All Hallows. I think I'm gonna put some fabric on mine. And there we have a little historical conversation starter. I hope you enjoyed this week's craft chat, and I hope you feel a little bit safer this All Hallows with a bonfire in your backyard and a witch's bottle under your porch. If you're interested in learning more about witchcraft in the 17th century, then I invite you to come out to Henrikus Historical Park this October for the Witching Hour, our very first witchcraft event. With any luck, by then we'll be able to talk to you and answer your questions in person. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more Craft Chat content. Happy halfway to Halloween! Stay safe, everyone.